There's been so much written and reported about me over the past year, and I've been pretty quiet up until now. It wasn't like I went schizo and was like five different personalities and needed to be put in a straitjacket or tried to kill myself like they were saying. And I just think it's time to set the record straight. Among the people that you were uh, romantically linked with for a while, there was uh, Eminem. Was there anything to that? To the romantically linked? Probably the most important thing for me as a performer is for my fans to know where I'm coming from. I would always say to myself, when I never want to get that big where I'm one of those people that they make up stuff about and make these tabloid stories because I know this is fake. Even as a little kid, I was like, because this ain't none but some nonsense. <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to getting back on stage and performing live for my fans. It's just going to feel so good to really just, just sing from my heart. <laughs> First of all, and I guess most importantly, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And what happened last year around mid late summer? Well, basically, to answer your first question, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> now that we've cleared I'm good, that but up. I didn't have a lot of headlines written about no, me. No, you and... didn't. Somebody needs a little therapy. What's wrong? <laughs> Recovering from her physical and emotional breakdown. I'm trying to understand things in life right now. Obviously exhausted and not thinking clearly. Basically, I exhausted myself because I was working 21 hour days for at least two or three months straight. Most everyone who's written about this has at one time or another referred to it as a breakdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the, from your camp came a statement that referred to it as a physical and emotional breakdown. No, it was not a nervous breakdown. There was a lot of different things. It was, it was an emotional and physical. More than anything, it was my body saying, stop. Your body can only withstand so much. Sleep deprivation is real. But I think, you know, your average... Joe, Joe doesn't six pack. understand right. exhaustion. Right. Think, well, why doesn't you go take a nap? Right. Go take a nap. And guess what? Basically, that's all I needed. But the right. point is, you know, half-hour naps on a 21-hour day consistently don't add up. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm saying it's my own fault for not putting my foot down and sticking up for myself earlier and saying, no, I need a lunch break. No, I need like a half an hour dinner break. Yeah. You know, and yes, I need at least six hours of sleep every night. But 
prior to that, where it all really stemmed from, is the fact that I grew up poor. I come from an interracial family. I always felt like the rug could be pulled out from under me. And I've always had this incredible work ethic where I was afraid that if I didn't work twice as hard as everybody else, I wouldn't succeed and everything I'd worked for my whole life would be gone and I'd be back living in like a little tiny room in a shack. So, you know, if I had an in-store and I hadn't slept for 20 hours, I would never blow off an in-store or not go because I might disappoint one fan. What I needed was to just have some boundaries in my life to take care of myself, to say no sometimes because I never wanted to say no because I never wanted to let the fans down because I don't know how and I didn't. I do know a little bit better now but I never knew how to draw the line. Can you say with pretty, uh, pretty much confidence that a breakdown is not yeah, what happened? I, you know what, when I read like the quote that was physical and emotional breakdown I was like breakdown and then I was like you know what I can live with that but it wasn't like I went schizo and was like five different personalities and needed to be put in a straitjacket right. or tried to kill myself like they were saying right. they were saying I had slashed my wrists and done all this stuff and it's like none of that occurred there was talk about the messages that were left on the website right, there was talk right, about right. broken glass mm -hmm. and all these things that led to all these rumors that you might right. have tried to to hurt yourself you know right exactly so the broken glass thing had nothing to do with me trying to hurt myself I, I broke a glass by accident but the message on the website was me saying thank you nothing's wrong you don't have to do anything to anybody I just need break because I know I don't say this very much but guess what it's time to take care of myself it was a rambling message but it was one of about a hundred rambling messages I had left but it it would sound to a listener like okay something's wrong and something was wrong right. I was totally exhausted I needed to go to sleep uh -huh. and I needed rest and I needed people to leave me alone and stop banging on my freaking door to get up and do a video You know, people point to that uh, the appearance on TRL when you came on TRL. Oh, I know. The drama, the saga of the TRL. What are you doing? Like, we were doing Dateline, and suddenly <laughs> I went into, like, a striptease burlesque show. I'm right. like, it's TRL. I thought we were supposed to feel at home right. and do stupid stuff. <laughs> as far as you're concerned, that was just being silly and fun. As far as I'm concerned, I was doing having food fights on MTV three right. years ago for Thanksgiving. Did anybody right. see that? I'm not going to stop being me because people don't, you know, get me. Sure. Only thing I wish I would have done is had a better camera angle. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do after performance, when I get the opportunity, is to actually sit down and meet with and talk to my fans. I had a lot of questions. I just wanted to chop it up with you, talk about the new album. Okay. Do you have your tone bracelet on? Yes. Can I see it? Yeah, but it's and not... It's not like, what? Okay, what do you see? Nice. Are on it. Okay, some of them I'm going to keep, like, private, because this is not the one... For the album, I have one that's that represents each song, mm -hmm. but it's not done yet, so it's like, um, it's like a a different version, a more toned down version of my mm -hmm. little one. It's not going to have these. Some of these are kind of nonsensical, but... Okay. Oh, wow. So... Oh, wow. Oh, I know. Oh, All right, the I knew. But, okay. Butterfly. Butterfly. Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we are. Right, Ross. Cross. A heart. A dolphin. Because you like dolphins? Yes, indeedy. And 327, six. your birthday. Yes, wow. Okay, wow. Let's get this going. <laughs> Who's that? Hello Kitty. Yeah. I know. Please. Clover. Clover. Oh. It's actually like beautiful. It Thank you. But the album one has like, I got a little bit deeper and they're more antique charms. This summer you lost your dad. But I guess the good thing about that is you guys had gotten closer in the last few months. Well actually in the last couple of years we had started to have more conversations and um, he was investigating his family tree and a bunch of different things because he has a real mixed heritage himself. His mom's African-American and his father came from Venezuela but grew up in Harlem. So it's not like he knew all about his family and stuff. So I was helping him, you know, work on that and we had this project together. And that's something we had never really had because my parents got divorced when I was three. But, um, you know, I do have really nice memories and he actually saved everything I've ever made for him in my life since I was two years old. And I have it. It's like in this folder that he made for me. And Did it surprise you that he had the, that kind of yes. a sentimental side? Yes, because I thought he didn't even know my songs. And people were like, 
come on, like he doesn't know your songs, but he just didn't talk about it. He thought, like when I was singing in Vision of Love, Suffered from Alienation, all those things I was saying, he thought that was about him, like me feeling abandoned by him, which it totally wasn't. And we had this whole conversation, which was like, look, that, you know, it's just about how I've always felt growing up. I always felt different being, you know, multiracial. I didn't really feel like I knew where I fit in. I felt this way, that when we had like this intense conversation, and then he said to someone else, you know, Mariah told me such and such that really means so much to me that lifted such a burden off me meanwhile I never knew it so I just thank God that I had that time and that we were able to clear the air of everything so it was cancer yeah I was with him up until basically the last you know few hours and um, a lot of family that hadn't seen each other in years came together and that made him really happy I know it's kind of like hard thing to talk about but we had like um at the end he couldn't really have flowers or things like that because he would have an allergic reaction so the sunflower became this thing and my mother told me that they used to grow sunflowers when I was little and I didn't know that so it became this thing where I always would bring sunflowers and um, so for his memorial we did the whole um, the place where we had his memorial in sunflowers and that's kind of why I did it for the video for that and there's a track on the album called yeah. sunflower right yeah. for him mm -hmm. I know that you know, your being biracial has been a big part of you, not only in your growing up, but also your career. And do you feel like it's something that still maybe people don't appreciate enough is such a part of you? That... I think most people don't know, honestly. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because the more I talk about it, it seems the less people know. Yeah. It's so strange. When my mother married my father, her family disowned her. Most of her family disowned her. So what does that do? to your sense of self sure. it's like okay does that mean like i'm dirty i'm unhealthy i'm like not you know i'm not worthy of living because mm. like this union is wrong therefore like what does that make me mm. you know that's a thing that's always been kind of disturbing for me and of course you know since butterfly there's been this this dichotomy or this this thing of you know people always saying well is it good? are we gonna this time are we gonna get the hip hop Mariah or are we gonna get the the balladeer Mariah are you caught in the middle do you feel like is that annoying no to you? like when I'm creating a, a like an album I just write the you know make the records that I want to make growing up in New York growing up the way that I did with such a mixed background you couldn't help but be absorbed in like the hip-hop culture the fact is yours at home if not more so in the R&B and hip-hop world than you are right. in the pop world I mean in all honesty yeah right. <laughs> you right. know most of my friends and most of the music that I listen to and most of my influences are R&B or hip-hop